Hi, and welcome to our video 18.1, Reaction Rates and Equilibrium. So uh, by this point, you've learned a little bit about chemical reactions. You've learned about uh, some types, whether it's synthesis or decomp or single or double replacement or the like. And we even talked a little bit about heat of chemical reactions, right, where you'll have your energy of the reactants, some sort of activation energy, and then your energy of the products. And then the heat of the reaction is going to be the difference between these two. Right, and this one here is drawn as for an exothermic reaction. Well, in order for a chemical reaction to actually take place, the products have to come into contact with each other. Right? So the more they're able to come into contact with each other, the faster the chemical reaction will happen. The less they're able to come into contact with each other, the slower the reaction will happen. Okay, so that brings us to reaction rate, the speed of these reactions. So these reactions happen when reacting particles collide with sufficient energy, that's that activation energy, and the proper angle, so when they hit each other just right. So that means things that cause more collisions will make the reaction rate increase. So more collisions, faster reaction. Things like increasing temperature, right? Because as you add heat, things move faster. They're going to bump into each other more often. Increasing concentration. So in a container, the more stuff you have, the higher the concentration, the more there is, the more likely they'll bump into each other. With gases, that would mean increasing the pressure, right? So as the pressure increases for a gas, there's more particles, the more they're going to collide with each other, okay? Then also increasing surface area, solids, right? So if you have something, there's little blocks, right? The inside part of these aren't going to be able to touch each other, they're not going to collide. But if it's a dust or a powder or smaller crystals, the more likely they'll come into contact with each other. Now we can also add a catalyst that makes a reaction go faster. And it removes steps from the mechanism, lowering the activation energy, right? Remember, right, so here's our energy of the reactants. There's our energy of the products. There's our activation energy. Adding a catalyst basically lowers the activation energy and will also speed up the reaction. All right, so we're going to go back to heat of reaction. And so far, all we talked about with heat of reaction, I'll keep drawing the same curve, right? It's the difference between the potential energy of the products and the potential energy of the reactant, right? And it's the en energy of the product minus the potential energy of the reactant, okay? So when it's negative, it's exothermic. When it's positive, it's endothermic. All right, but now we're going to actually uh, think about some numbers, right? So, yeah, just more review reactions either absorb energy it's positive endothermic or they release energy since exothermic and negative well you can actually add numbers to these all right and different reactions are going to have different numbers and there's a bunch of them on table i on the reference tables and as a reminder it's exothermic when you're a potential energy is becoming kinetic, energy is leaving, the temperature goes up. It's endothermic, the opposite, kinetic energy becoming stored energy, right? So you're storing energy where it ends up higher, and the temperature goes down. So, like, if this is the chemical equation, right, and then we have here our delta H in kilojoules, uh, minus 3351. If you would actually write that out and put this, the heat, in the chemical equation, it's going to look like so. Okay, exothermic means the energy is a product because it gives off 
heat. Okay, the heat energy is a product. The other one down here, the nitrogen plus oxygen making NO, we have to put in energy, so the energy is a reactant. So exo, the energy is a product. Endo, the energy is a reactant. All right, so next topic is equilibrium. And you've learned about equilibrium in science for years. But an interesting way to look at it is, let's say you're going the wrong way on an escalator, right? So here the escalator's going down and you, in this case, Mr. Equilibrium, is going up. So he's walking against the escalator, right? And I'm gonna say, don't try this at the mall because I don't want to hear it, all right? So if the escalator's going down and you're standing still at the bottom, that's showing a reaction that never starts. So it's at equilibrium without anything happening at all. If you start walking and walk at just enough speed to keep yourself 25% up the escalator, right? that's showing the reaction going 25% of the way before it's reaching equilibrium. Now you're staying still. So if we have our reactants becoming our products, down here we'd have 25% products. We've gone only 25% of the way and the reaction, but we still have 75% reactants. Halfway up is half and half. 75% of the way up, now we would have 75% of it being products, 25% of it being reactants. And if you get all the way up the stairs, that's showing that a reaction goes all the way to completion and it's not an equilibrium type reaction. All right? And then there are a lot of reactions like that. Okay, so equilibrium is when the rate of the forward reaction equals the rate of the reverse reaction. That's actually the definition. Okay, and we write it like so. Right, instead of just having one arrow, we actually have two arrows, and they'll frequently be drawn like this. All right, so some examples. One, you can have a solution equilibrium. Right, when you add too much uh, sugar to your tea. Right, you get some sugar that's sitting down at the bottom. Right? The same sugar is not always sitting down at the bottom. It's actually an equilibrium reaction where some of the sugar is dissolving and other sugar that was dissolved is settling out. That's called precipitating. You know, kind of like when it rains, we call it precipitation when the water is settling out of the sky. Okay? So when a solution is saturated, the rate of dissolving equals the rate of precipitating. Right? So if you take salt added to water and you put too much right you'll have some na plus some cl minus and it's going back and forth where some of it's dissolving and others precipitating right when we talked about uh, vapor pressure okay you end up with a vapor liquid equilibrium right so liquid is trapped with air in a container so we have liquid here's some air some liquid is evaporating other is condensing and they're equal and that's going to actually create some vapor pressure up here. And that's, on this case, liquid water becoming liquid gas and back and forth. We can also have a phase equilibrium, right? So we have solid water ice melting, right? So if we think of our heating curve, during this time of melting, right, this isn't actually, if we keep our temperature at zero degrees Celsius, at the melting point, the some water will constantly be freezing, some ice will constantly be melting, as long as we're keeping the whole thing at the melting point, zero degrees, and the rate of solid turning to liquid equals the rate of liquid turning back to solid. So if we look at it, we'll see always the same amount of ice, the same amount of water, but it's actually some is always freezing, some is always melting. All right, so this brings us to a very important principle that we're going to do a bunch of problems to practice, and it's called Le Chatelier's principle. That means, the fancy definition is, if a system at equilibrium is stressed, the equilibrium will shift in a direction that relieves that stress. 
what is a stress? A stress is a factor that affects the reaction rate, okay? And since catalysts affect both reaction rates, right? So, right, we think of our heating thing here, blah, 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 activation energy, catalyst, does something like that. It lowers the activation energy for the forward and for the reverse reaction. So catalysts have no effect on equilibrium. All right, the way to memorize Le Chatelier's principle is equilibrium will shift away from what is added. Add, oops, sorry, away. So I always remember it, add away. So it's going to always get pushed away from whatever is added. And then the opposite is also true. Equilibrium will shift towards what is removed. Or say the inverse is true. All right, so add away, and then if you remove, it'll shift towards it. And that's because the shift will even out the change in reaction rate and bring the system back to equilibrium. So it's always looking to get back to equilibrium. So anytime we add something, the reaction will shift a little bit and find a new equilibrium. All right, let's look at an example. So here's this reaction. Nitrogen gas plus hydrogen gas is going to make ammonia, NH3, and some heat. Okay? So if we add more nitrogen, right, add away, it's going to shift the reaction towards the right. Because we add nitrogen, it's going to shift the reaction towards the right. So there'll be an increase in things on the right and a decrease in other things on the left. Okay, so we add some nitrogen. That means if we add nitrogen, it's going to shift away. So there'll be an increase in NH3, an increase in heat, because that's here too. So an in heat will also increase. And there'll also be a decrease now in whatever hydrogen was there. And the nitrogen, even though we added some, that'll also start to decrease from what we added. So add away. Add nitrogen means we'll increase what's on the opposite side of the arrow. Remove hydrogen is going to then shift towards. So if we remove hydrogen, there'll be a shift to the left this time, causing a decrease in NH3, a decrease in the heat, but now an increase in the nitrogen. Increasing the temperature, right, add away, will shift away from the heat, so it's going to cause an increase in the nitrogen, an increase in the hydrogen, and a decrease in the ammonia. Decreasing the pressure, now with pressure, all right, we have to think gases, right? Pressure only affects gases. So when we change the pressure, we're going to, on each side, count the gases. I know it's a weird way of saying it, but we're going to count the gases. And on the left, there are four, three plus one equals four gases really four moles of gas, but we'll say four gases. On the right, there's two moles of gas, so we'll say two gases. So when we increase the pressure, okay, add away, it'll go away from the side with the most gases. So an increase in the pressure would shift to the right, because it's going away from where there's more gases. A decrease in the pressure will cause a shift to the left, because it's the opposite of add away. Right. And once again, adding a catalyst has no effect, so no shift will happen. All right, so there's a lot of really, really new stuff here. Uh, probably, eh, maybe expect some sort of quiz near the beginning of the period. So you need to make sure you go back and listen to stuff again. Make sure you wrote down all the important stuff. Maybe if I'm feeling magnanimous, I'll even make it an open book quiz. We'll see. Alrighty, that brings us to the end of 18.1. I'll see you guys in school.